Come on, let's go into the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your Word. Your Word is spirit. It's life. It's health to all of our flesh. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the power to stop all this madness, Woo, all this foolishness. We thank you for it, Lord, and we just take hold of the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth of the Word of God, and we intend to see our lives become living billboards to your goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all good? All right. It's March Madness. I know the guys are glad about it. No, excuse me. Basketball lovers are glad about it. But some ladies are basketball. And so I know that we got happy people. Y'all see Pastor Trev feeling himself this morning. Because <laughs> Duke won, you know, so we, you know. And so we, we thank the Lord. I, ain't, I, just, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> But it's March Madness, and all the teams come together, and they play, and they compete, and um, it is, it's something to see. Who was that? I know I shouldn't bring it up, because I felt bad, bad for the guy that did it. Who is it? Is it Hard, Harder, Hard, Harding, the guy that did that move and left that guy on the floor? <laughs> and they, like, played it all day. I said, yeah, that's March Madness already. That, that was sad. So one of the things that uh, we want to do all month long on Sunday and Wednesdays, we were trying to do it just on Sundays, but our lives are too broad just for four sermons. Relationships, I mean, our lives are about relationships. Amen. Amen? And so we're going to be talking about, and I should have brought it up here, we got friendship. We're going to be, uh, <laughs> oh, Lord, working on, oh, oh. Uh, fatal attraction when you introduce sex too soon and dating and attraction and chemistry and marriage and it's going to be a lot going on all month long but it's going to be good isn't it Amen. so let's go ahead and get started we're believing God today we're talking about empowered for covenant friendship Amen. your excitement's overwhelming empowered for covenant friendship give me first Samuel chapter 18 Amen. Hallelujah. That's weak, y'all. If we're going to do it, we got to do it. If we ain't going to do it, just don't do it. Don't mess the thing up. All right. We're going into God's Word. Let's celebrate that. Yeah. 1 Samuel 18 says, and it came to pass, verse 1, when he had made an end of speaking under Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him not as a girlfriend. Amen. Come on, talk to me but loved him as his own soul, okay? Saul took David home that day. Uh, he, Saul was the king and didn't let, let him go back home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a... Covenant. What did they make, y'all? Covenant. Uh-huh, because he loved him again as his own soul. soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and his bow and to his girdle. Now... You know, I, I, I asked Pastor Trev to kind of let me know whether there were certain teams that work well together. And he said, well, like the Golden State Warriors, they work well together. They have great players, but they don't seem to conflict. But then I said, well, do you have any pairs? And he said, there was a team, the Utah Jazz, that had John Stockton and Carl Malone. Who remembers them? And he said, Pastor, they did the pick and roll. They had that thing work to perfection. They just had it down. They worked so well together. Now, they didn't, they didn't win the championships they wanted. And I think this is an interesting point. Two players that work together great is awesome. But if you're going to win stuff, you need a whole team. Okay? So just bear that in mind. Well, but he also brought it. He said, now, two people that didn't. Worked that well. I mean, they won a lot of. T they had a lot of good players on their team. Was Shaq and Kobe, Amen. and that had they. It, it's only. It's. It's. He said we can only. He said they left people scratching their head on what they could have been had they liked each other and been able to work in sync with each other. And I'm just gonna throw this out. A lot of people miss out on making this incredible mark in life. Because can't get along with nobody. That's okay. It just dropped off. It's all right. And here's the thing. God has given us the power to win in every situation. How many really believe that, y'all? He's given us power to win 
in every situation, and relationships are a part of that. See how it fell off? The Bible says that the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have and have it how? You don't have more abundant life if you don't have any friends. You're probably mad and evil acting, self-centered, all kinds of things because it's frustrating. And I know we come in here and we shout, and we say, honey, give it honor to God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and we just say, oh, I'm just so happy. Oh, the joy, the joy. But the reality is a lot of people are not very, very happy people. And one of the primary reasons is they do not have any quality, healthy, happy friendships. Amen. I'm just saying. We just might as well go on and get to it. Far too many people live unfulfilled and it's wreaking havoc on the body of Christ because you see a trail of broken hearts because people don't have these solid long-term relationships. And then they have dysfunctional friendships and it leaves a spot or a blemish on the body of Christ because everybody's looking around at saying, what is wrong with them? They can't get along with nobody. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Because we have to learn to value friendships. Okay. And like I said, I love that song, Vicky, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. That's a lie. Long as I can talk. Now, I mean, to get to heaven, I just need it. But if I ain't going today, <laughs> I'm going to want somebody. To, God knows you're off on the fast from Saturday at 6 till Sunday night at 9. Everybody wants somebody to drink a Dr. Pepper with. Amen. How many been drinking water so much you don't care if you ever even go to the beach again? You're sick of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Watch this. Let me get myself together. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Give me verse 9 and go on down a little bit. Two are better than one. That's right. Because they have a good reward for their labor. That's right. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right. Come on. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Woe to the one that's alone when he falls. Because he doesn't have anybody to help him up. Woe to the individual that falls in their faith that falls in their perspective on life, that falls in their perspective about their family. Because somebody might have upset you and your family. You say, you know what, I ain't studying none of them. Uh, I ain't studying none of them. Bump them. And if you don't have anybody in your life, you can allow that little foolish attitude that came up there that may have only lasted a couple hours had you had relationships. But since you didn't have anybody to challenge you, it went on week one, week two, week three. Then you start being embarrassed and didn't want to call. Now here you are 12 years later. And need $100 and want to ask the church to give it to you because you got too much pride to go to the family you're supposed to go to. Oh, Lord, all this preaching, first thing, I just got home. Okay? See, without real covenant friendships that we hold on to that are long-lasting, we won't mature. Now, this is heavy. Because I know that we think we can mature just because we learn more Bible verses. But learning Bible verses and maturing is different. You can quote scripture, but that does not mean that you have allowed it to shape your personality and beginning to challenge things in you that make you susceptible to sin or silliness. But when you have long-term receipt, now if you change friends like you change draws, I'm sorry, some of y'all don't know what draws are, panties and underwear. If you change friends like that, if you switch them out, every time something gets uncomfortable and irritating, then you probably are not ever going to mature. Because you will always assume that that is something wrong with them, and they try to hunt. They don't know. I don't even know. That's why I don't want to tell you right now. That's why I just get my books, my Bible, my personal belongings, because I ain't going to let these people wear me. I don't like drama. 
You need a tattoo, say drama queen, won't cross your forehead. <laughs> and then we go in the other direction. She said, you know what? That's why I don't like to be bothered. I'm telling you, I'm tired. I ain't going to be hurt no more. Bump it all. Forget it. I'm going to go to church and just praise God. The Lord knows my heart. You know you're in sin. You know you're messing up when you say that, right? That's like almost the catchphrase for you starting a mess. The Lord knows my heart. Uh Uh-uh. Right? And here's the thing. Give me Genesis 2. Here's the thing you need to understand. You and I were created to be in relationships. We were created. And I'm going to tell you something. Oh, I pray for this. I pray for this generation. I pray for the generation of texting. I love text. Now, I'm going to tell you, I love a good text. Oh, God, don't call me. I'd almost, because I talk, I don't want to talk. I, I, oh, I love that. But the concern is, if that is the primary way you communicate through technology, then how will you handle it? Because, see, a te- you know, you can just put a smiley face. You can put a little heart there. You ain't studying what they say. You ought say you just, but Alma, you just stuck the thing there. You ain't thought nothing of it. <laughs> but if they were sitting there, you had to pay attention. They may want to talk to you about something, and you don't feel like talking. So if it's a text message, you say, girl, loving you, click, and send it on. And so this generation does not know yet that they don't have it in them to handle the uncomfortable moments that come when you are in somebody's presence. So that's why by the time they get around each other, they just go straight to sex. And then when they realize that minute and a half is not worth it, I just wanted to see if y'all will wait. <clears throat> Genesis 2.18, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. And we won't even get on the fact that since, you know, we don't have dinner tables no more. So when, when will they learn that you got to get along with people? When will they learn when you have to compromise, and then when you shouldn't. Anyway, Genesis 2.18, we were designed for relationship. Come on. And the Lord God said, Mm -hmm. it is not good that the man should be alone. It's not good. Now, we understand in Genesis 2.18 that, of course, he's getting ready to introduce Eve and, and, and bring Eve out of Adam and the whole nine. But we already know every person will not get married. Okay, but what every person does have to have is social interaction. You got to have somebody that you can just holler at and say, what you doing? Huh? Huh? You know, so you, it, 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 I know it doesn't seem like it's developing, but that's huge. Somebody to say, what are you doing after church? Let's go get a burger. Let's go do this. Let's go. Everybody needs that social interaction. It's a sense to feel like you belong something somewhere. And watch this. I thank God. Thank God for a church. Thank God for fellowship. But I'm telling you, we can't have enough church to make up for you not developing a friendship. Okay, so we got to set our faith to say, God, help me be empowered. I know I got the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can have the kind of relationships that you want me to have. Adam had God, but he still needed somebody else. All right. So, you know, there are uh, some things that challenge us in this, and I got to keep it moving. There, I'm going to give you four different kinds of uh, relationships. And, uh, you know, as Bishop, uh, Bishop Jakes talks about Three, but I, 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 put, I saw another one that I feel like I have to bring out to you. So you want me to give them all at once? First one is companions. Okay, first one is a companion. And uh, then the second one is a constituent. Just make a note of these words and we'll go back. The third is a comrade. All right, so companion, constituent comrade, and then a covenant confidant. All right? So I felt like I had to include companion because I think this is where a lot of folk gets mixed up. A companion, as I wrote it, is casual company. This is folk you enjoy. Y'all like some of the same things. Okay. 
See, what I want you to see is we need friendships and relationships, but where people get, get messed up is we start trying to make a friend out of somebody we just have fun with. Because everybody that's funny at a party ain't, ain't quality enough to be your friend for what God wants to do in your life. I ain't getting no help in that section back in the back. I'm feeling, okay, I got me a hand or two. No, there are some people. Now, come on, y'all. There are some people, they are hilarious. Or, there's, or, or maybe y'all like the same thing. Maybe you like basketball or something. And so y'all can get together, man. There is just nothing like they're just hilarious to hear them talk about basketball. It's just fun and funny. Oh, wasn't it Charles Barkley? He talks about, yeah. He's, he's funny, too. He just, no, 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 no. He just, don't know if we would necessarily match. And where we get messed up again is when because we enjoy somebody and because we may enjoy similar things, we assume that they would be a person for friendship. And you got to be okay that some people are cool companions periodically. Without trying to open your heart. Oh, Lord. Ain't nobody shouting off this. I guess this won't be no shout message. All right. Lord, they done got upset. They said, I'm dragging it out. The saints just get up and walk out. Turn. <laughs> it must be companions. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right. Second thing. Lord, is, I mean, it's more and more. Okay. Just hold your hope, Rose. Hold your hope. Constituents. All right? And this is important. These are people who are for what you are for. Now, I'm going to tell you why this is important, particularly in the church world. As a pastor, and uh, I know there are pastors that watch, and and, and, and let me just say, there are people who are for what you're for. So, in other words, like say in the church, there are some people, they know I have a heart for those who don't have. I have a heart for veterans. I have a heart for seniors. I mean, it's really big. These things are really big. And missions. So, they say, ooh, yeah, I'm for missions. So, then they come and join. Watch now. And if I don't get some sense from God, I will think everybody who's excited about missions, the vision is actually a true member. Just because that, what, watch this, I'll show you how you, you can tell. They're all about the church while it's on missions, but what happens if God shifts the emphasis? And now it's not on missions, then it becomes on, you know, maybe, you know, domestic violence. Then all of a sudden, I just don't know if the Lord has really... I just not, something is not right in my spirit. <laughs> See, because they confused really commitment, and I can, could have confused it. Baby, everybody that's for what you're for is not really for you. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you will assume that people who are excited about what you're excited about are really friendship, and then you start sharing things that are inappropriate for that level of relationship. And they will walk off and be done. So constituents are people who are for what you're for. Comrades, and this is where a lot of people in our day, because we love angry folk. Comrades are people who fight against what you fight against. They're against what you're against. So if you say, honey, I can't hardly stand. I'm, now, again, you know, be careful of the way you use your verbiage. So if there's someone that says, well, I don't care for the president. I don't like our president. And somebody says, honey, me, it is a mess. Ain't it a mess? <laughs> and so if you're not careful, then you will partner on the side of something that you are both against. And just because you all both don't like something does not mean there is any kind of meaningful commitment between the two of you. So then when you are looking for something or somebody, you're in a sensitive season, they ain't stunning you because they wasn't about you. Come on, y'all. Okay? And so you you have to understand that that's different. That's different. 
And this, is, this stuff has been very hard for me because I am trusting by nature. So for me, if we say, I can't stand the devil, you say, I can't stand him either. It's like, oh, man, I met a friend. <laughs> and I have been that way my entire life. I've also had a whole lot of hurt and was shocked. I mean, I mean, it took him about 40 years to figure the thing out. 46, 7, how old am I now? Yeah, maybe about 46 years to figure a lot of this stuff out. Because there were people, I'd be so excited about something, and they were like, yeah, we got to, oh, let's get delivered. We need more deliverance at the altar. Yes, God. Woo, Pastor, Pastor. And I just thought, oh, man, they're like right here. And then I start sharing, and they took it out and run. Because I thought that since we like the same things, and you smiled, I smiled. You got to grow past that, right? So you got companions, that's this casual company that you enjoy, some of the same things, don't confuse it. Constituents, people who are for what you're for, comrades against what you're against. But then they're covenant friends or confident, Bishop Dakes call it confidants, covenant friendships. This is the person that's for you. This is the person that loves you. They love you and will fuss with you. They love you and they're there for you. They care about who you are. Not what you have, not just what you, watch this, a real friend can, you can be for something they ain't even for it, but they're for you. They care about, okay, and you and I, if we're going to walk out our Christian faith, we need to be asking God, God, show me, the, first of all, the difference in all of this. So that I can be comfortable moving in and out of settings with people who fall in these various categories. But give me the sense to identify my covenant friends. And if I don't have any, I'm in faith to get a couple. Not a lot. I'm in faith to get a Now let's look at some stuff. I want to look at what this real covenant friendship looks like, what it entails. We're going to look at two sets of male friendships. I'm not going to bring up lady friendships today. I don't have the strength. <laughs> I, I just don't. I, I don't. I ain't, I ain't like. And see, the other reason I want to do male is because a lot of times we highlight friendship like it's feminine. That's nonsense. Okay, I got one hand. Guys, listen to me. You want to know why men die so much younger? You don't have any friends. I didn't mean that as a joke. I mean that. See, we would have been able to save because you work so hard. But now, the ladies carrying the same kind of level of burden. And with all the stuff we got going on, it's a wonder. So, then why is it that men... Die like seven to eight years earlier. Because you won't develop any friendships. Because you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You don't have anybody to say, hey, man, I could tell you can't. <laughs> you don't look right. That guy went in there and shot his parents. Doc, you don't look right. What's up? Somebody to share it with. So we're going to look at two sets today. One is horrible, and the other is amazing. First one, I want you to look at this horrible one, because I want to make sure that if you, nobody develops this kind, and if you have it, that you back out of it immediately, all right? So we're going to be looking at, in 2 Samuel 13, we're going to look at Amnon and Jonadab. Lord have mercy. Amy. Jonah, Amnon and Jonadab. Now, as you get ready to go to first, uh, Second Samuel 13, here's, here's the way this thing sets up. Okay, so, you know, David is king, Absalom's one of his sons, and whole nine yards. And so, you got Absalom, pretty guy, got a real pretty sister named Tamar. And uh, Amnon is one of the other brothers. You know, David had all the wives. You got to be careful when you... <laughs> pocket of them over there, pocket over here. You got somebody look just like you in Windsor. You understand what I'm saying? 
Boy, y'all stuck up today. I wish y'all would lighten up. So, so here you have Amnon is one of the brothers, and so he has a half-sister that is drop-dead gorgeous, apparently, because Absalom was so pretty. So I know she must have been amazing, too. So the Bible says in 2 Samuel, what is it, 13? Pick it up at verse 1. And it came to pass after this that yeah. Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister uh -huh. whose name was That doesn't Tamar. mean fair skin. I'm going to get on that on third Sunday. Keep reading. I'm going to leave it. Gonna drop that thing just like that. Come on. Fair sister who's Oh, God, I was getting ready to do something for that. <laughs> okay. Go on. Read. I'm going to preach that. Y'all know, that. know that's going to be my... Oh! Who has not seen the Black Panther? Get out. Get out. <laughs> y'all trying to wait for me to rent that theater. I know what y'all doing. Go see the movie. I'm sorry. Read the Bible, baby. Stay focused, church. Stay focused. So he has this beautiful sister named Tamar, and uh, Amnon, the son of David, look what the Bible said. Loved her. That's not right. That ain't so. No, 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 no. Because the pastor's here, so the Bible won't true. Listen, okay. There's truth, okay, and then there are things that are stated. It's telling a story, okay? That ain't love. You're going to see it. That's his half-sister. Keep reading. And Amnon was so vexed that mm -hmm. he fell sick to his sister Tamar, mm -hmm. for she was a virgin, and Amnon... Doc it. was lusting so bad he was hurting for her. His sister! Keep going. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to I her. I guess... He's thinking, other, it was, I, you know, he can't figure out. I, surely I can't. You're right. You shouldn't. Incest is wrong, y'all. Amen. Amen. And don't write me. Listen, I'm telling you, don't write me over this. First of all, I don't read anonymous letters. Because if you got a belief that you can't sign, I, I ain't paying attention to it. So, but here's the thing. I don't care what all went on. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm, I am not that old for Bible time. But you got no business touching on anybody, having any kind of sexual anything. This, this stuff where these uncles or these aunts, whatever it is, y'all, okay. It's sin. And if we find out, we're going to call the police on them. I mean, I love you, and I pray for you to try to give you a plan of restoration from prison. Because I don't understand why, instead of violating your child, you wouldn't just masturbate. I don't, I don't understand it. Are y'all acting funny because I said that? And yet we got to see all of these people crying and coming up to the altar, can't hardly function. Does somebody come in their room? What? Oh, let me know. No, just put the hand down. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Why are you going to destroy somebody's future when you could have just... Let us go on. So he, he really wants us to just keep reading. Marcia, you're slowing up. But Amnon had a friend. Yeah, watch that. Amnon had a what? A friend. Come on. Whose name was Jonadab, uh -huh, his the first son cousin. of Shemiah, yeah. David's brother. Keep and going. Jonadab was a very subtle He's man. He's sneaky. Come on. And he said unto him, why art thou, being uh -huh. the king's son, lean from day to day? Why, why, why are you so upset, Doc? You're the king's son. You're a prince. Tell me what's wrong. He said, well, I love Tamar. Oh, wow. He said, well, man, there ain't no problem. You're the king's son. Mm -hmm. You get her if you want her. You... Let me tell you what you do, Doc. Here's all you got to do. You can get that. You can tap that sure as anything in this world. I'm reading the Bible. Where are y'all? <laughs> Look, there, it's in the Bible. He said, this is all you got to do. Act like you're real sick. Tell your dad. Say, look, get, uh, act like you can't remember who. Get somebody, I don't know, maybe Tamar. Get Tamar. Have her come and, uh, you know, cook something. Let me watch it because my stomach's been upset. I just need to make sure. And, just, and he watching her and all that stuff. And then he's going to rape the girl. And he got the idea how to do it from his friend. You 
and I cannot afford to have people, I don't care whether they've been friends since we were three, we cannot afford to have people in our lives that make it easy for us to live a low, sinful, ungodly life. You are not my friend if you make it easy for me to cuss and lie and sleep around. You are not a friend. The Bible said faithful are the wounds of a friend. In other words, I'm a better friend to you when I cut you. When I say, I told you I had, you know, everybody got dumb days, right? Did everybody say amen on that? Well, I was in the season of a few dumb days. Zenobia said, I'm telling you now, you keep it up, I'm done with you. And you know, what, what do you do first? You don't understand. You don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand. She said, I don't, I don't have to understand. I'm done. <laughs> See, because when a real friend that has walked with you through some stuff, and you have walked, when they start saying, now you tripping now. See, that's why you need long-term relationships. These folk you ain't known for two months, they don't know you. And you got them judging everybody else. But let me tell you something. That's why you need to have some roots down. You need to have been friends with somebody for some years for them to be able to say of you, I knew her when and I know her now. And she still loves... Oh, y'all ain't going to talk. Oh, Lord. Remember? Remember? Remember what Peter did? Stay focused, Rose. Remember what Peter did with Jesus? Remember Peter and, and, and Judas? They're getting ready. Judas betrays Jesus. <sighs> betrays Jesus. He said, hey, the one that I'm going to kiss told the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, say, how much y'all got? 30 pieces of silver? Oh, that's good. I can get a good suit for six. Give me some shoes. Yeah, 30. That'll work. That's it. I'm going to kiss the one you need to take. It's okay. So Jesus saw Judas, and Judas walks up, gets ready to kiss him. And Jesus said, friend, where you been? Called Judas friend. Oh, get ready to mess with your head. <laughs> then Peter, when Jesus said, it's time. I'm getting ready to go to Jerusalem. They're going to they're turn me over. They'll lay hostile hands on me. They'll kill me so that I can be the payment for, your sin, for everybody's sins. And Peter said, I ain't going to let nobody kill you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Satan, get behind me. What is he showing us? He said, anybody... Because what he said to Peter, he's, you don't savor the things that are God. You're trying to appeal to my emotions to get me to not do what God wants me to do. In this moment, you're not being a friend to me. You're being Satan to me. And Judas, even though you're being hateful, you're actually helping me get to the place I'm supposed to be in destiny. So I call you friend. Anybody that makes it easy on you. To move outside of, not just the will of God but outside of your potential, they ain't a friend. Oh, come on, come on, come on. See, we don't need to confuse this stuff. Amnon and Jonadab, they had this bond, but it was not true covenant friendship because Jonadab, and I just throw this out, Jonadab, if y'all read the story, it's so terrible, it's a horrible story. Amnon rapes his sister, and she said, what? Don't do this. That's what you got to be a I I don't understand rape either. Why would you eat? Why would you want somebody that don't want you? And you're going to violate. You got to be. Get a punching bag. Get your anger out. You just, what is it? Just show control. You're nuts. Jonah Dab gives him the idea on how to rape his sister. In the middle of it, she says, look, please, right before she said, please don't do this. Look, you're a son of the king. If you ask, if, look, if it's all that, marry me. Got to have me that bad? I'm that fine? I'm getting ahead. See, I'm all out in the sex week. They wouldn't let me do it on third Sunday because the kids are being here. 
said, if it's all that, then marry me. He wouldn't even do that. Raped her. And then just as soon as he raped her, she was sickening to him. Watch this now. And so all the stuff happens, go on. He puts her in the shame. She's like, you ain't even, excuse me, you ain't even gonna marry me now. You're gonna just leave me out here. He said, get out, throw her out. See, that's a good thing they had guns back there. He'd have been on snapped. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Oh, did I mess the video up? I'm sorry. So watch, so watch this at the end. La la la, time passes. Absalom won't speak to him, but he's planning to get him. On time passes, and he ends up getting him killed. They kill him. Jonah Dab still in the house talking to Dad. Yeah, I'm non died. It's sad, isn't it? But you know, King stuff happens. Can I tell you something? The person that's trying to get you to clown. After you get caught and your life is torn all to pieces, they're going to still be sitting up in church. You better look. You better think through. All right. Let's look now. Let's look at a few verses because I want to get into Jonathan and David. So we see that Jonadab is a horrible example of somebody that they were friends and the friendship destroyed them. And there are some verses that you need to see. Give me Proverbs 12, 26 in the NIV. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Proverbs 12, 26 in NIV. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Yeah, the righteous man is cautious in it. So watch this. We need friendships. How many need friendships? Everybody should put your hand up, right? All right, but you can't just have any kind. There are scriptural criteria. Let's get it. So first thing, you need, to be, you need to be careful in the choice of a friend. All right? Proverbs 22, verse 24 and 25 says, here's one kind you can't have. You don't become friends with hot-tempered people. Now, they may be funny. You see them at lunch sometime. Okay, got it. But the Bible says that we are not supposed to develop friendship, covenant friendship with hot-headed, angry folk because you will learn their ways. I love this one. Get me Proverbs 14, 7. Oh, this is fun. This is a good one here. That's why you never ever let yourself be desperate for anything. Desperation takes away sense. Amen. Says, oh God, I love it. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive not in him the lips of knowledge. In other words, as soon as they let you know they're crazy, get your books, Bible, personal belongings, and get up out of that. You sitting down, y'all all playing spades, got a couple tables going, y'all just laughing, and you playing, and then you start hearing them act a certain way. Go on, finish the game. <laughs> Say, yeah. How many you got? Finish that game. Say, you want to play again? God knows it is late. And you get up out of there. You don't, you don't follow through. As soon as you tell that they don't have any sense, you start backing out of it. Why? Because you don't need to develop a soul tie with somebody silly. And listen, when you start seeing your life as bigger than where you are right now, you will make better choices. Because you start realizing there are some people that all they want is what I give them. They don't have it in their heart to give anything back. You have some people, they just like being around, you're calming. And then you try to assist them. Hey, you need to do this. I can't do that. Well, maybe you should, mm-mm, I went, mm-mm, mm-mm, that ain't me. But they always want to take two and three hours to tell you what's wrong. I know next Sunday ain't going to go good at all. I just, I'm just, I'm going to be geared up for it. After a while, you see, they ain't going to never do nothing. They don't want... They want to complain, but they don't want to change. And then they want to involve you and keep you hemmed up in the middle of that. You got to back out. Okay. Well, let's move on. Oh, here's one. I want you to turn to this one because you'll be mad if I don't. First Corinthians 5. Hurry, y'all. I only got a few seconds to work on this before I hit David and Jonathan. 
Jonathan is our guy. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 11 says, But now I've written unto you not to keep company. Talking about have friendship with any man that's, or, that's called, excuse me, with any man that is called a brother that's also a fornicator. Amen. Or covetous, or idolater, or railer, or drunkard, or extortioner. You don't even go get chicken with them. Somebody said, darn, I ain't got nobody to go eat with today. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No. That's terrible. That's terrible. No, let me tell you why this is doing this. Let me tell you why. If they are a brother that is called something. Now, I, got, I, it, it, I wouldn't be fair if I didn't deal with this, okay? Um, you got people who feel inclined towards same-sex relationships. Oh, God, y'all really? Okay? You got people who have... Uh, how, you know, are, are not doing as well keeping their sex drive under control waiting on their marriage date. Which they should now because that's a big deal and we'll talk about it later. But here's the thing. There is a difference. If I find out that Lady Tracy went out and got drunk. <laughs> after I checked to see whether anybody had a video... I would sit down and say, now, Trace, come on now. You, come on, come on. Be not drunk with wine, you know, wearing his excess. Come on, let's stay in the word of God. You know, you, you have to understand the role that God has, what you're doing. We got a world to win. We can't be tore up. Okay? That's one thing. And if Tracy comes to me and says, what y'all laughing? Huh? Oh, yeah, did she know? Don't let that thing all up by her neck fool y'all. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm sorry, Trace. Watch this now. There is a difference if, if that happened. That happens. Okay, so then I come to Trace. I say, come on now, Trace. You know, but come on now. Come on. If she said, I know, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, and she, she repents and she backs away from that, no worries. Some day, but no worries. If she says, okay, wait a minute, let me just say this. Because, you know, everybody got something. And you, you know, don't you, I, I, okay, so I'm lit up. You're too full. What, what's the difference? <laughs> oh, y'all ain't going to have church with me. I don't even know why y'all come to church. Y'all not going to. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the, the essence of that is if you choose to do something that you know is wrong, and you are not repenting. You just say, this is who I am. It's kind of like people living together. Okay, come on now, y'all. Okay, you're, or, or when, even the discussion we've had on same-sex stuff. If you say everybody with an inclination towards same-sex stuff can't go to church, you, <laughs> I need to be in the house of God. But now here's the thing. We sat down with, I mean, hearts of love. When somebody makes, I understand why you would want to get married. I understand that. But when you do that and there's no open door biblically, then what you're said is now, I know this is not, can do, does not align with Scripture, but I'm willing to be called this. I've chosen to keep this. And the Bible says, I can't, I can't, I can't hang with you. Because, watch this now, it's kind of like a man that's married and he got, him, you know, one or two others and everybody know it. And they told him to stop. He said, you tend to your business, and I tend to mine. Well, Bob said, I can't eat with you. And you don't even want to be around nobody like that. Because then what happens if, if, Kevin, if you and Tiana have an interesting little evening, it's a little stressful at the house, and something happens, she's like, that trash still didn't get taken out. And so, and then so everything, right, tight. Then you go to work, and he's in, and towards him, like, yeah, man, number three, I, ha, ha. Call my name. You understand know what I'm saying? And so then you got to hear that. You're trying to live godly and figure out how to fish out the one lake you bought. And he got a pole everywhere. I didn't mean to use pole. I didn't mean to use pole. That's a wrong example, wasn't it? God knows I didn't mean to do that one. I'm trying to figure out how to back out of that. 
Are you understand? But do you see how that messes with your mind? If you are around somebody who has accepted as an ungodly lifestyle, that's just them, then you got to try to be around them and you're trying to live godly. He says you can't do that because watching them live any kind of way will begin to wear down your conviction of righteousness. Come on, we got to get to the point today. Let's get to the point today. Oh, Lord. We don't have time for it. Read John 15, verses 9 through 15, whenever you get a chance. John 15, verses 9 through 15, because that's where Jesus talks about friendship. Talks about laying down your life for your friend. Talks about sharing things and being honest. But I want to, I can find all of this if y'all let me just go to 1 Samuel 18. Let's look at the principles of David and Jonathan's friendship. First thing I want you to know, 1 Samuel chapter 18, are you there? Because this will show you whether you need to have kind of this kind of relationship with somebody. First thing I want you to see is they made a covenant, and covenants provide security. All right, 1 uh, Samuel, excuse me, verse 18, David came to pass. They made an end of speaking Saul unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And he loved him again, not as a girlfriend, but as his own soul. Come on, guys. There's nothing wrong. Man, you ought to have a couple guys that y'all ride or die. Where the men at? I see a whole bunch of y'all in here. I don't hear nothing. Couple ride or dies. That's right. I mean, you, 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 come on. I always told you, a guy that never wants any guys around is a player. Oh, come on. Yes, sir. All day. And ladies, he doesn't get along with it. He's a player. He had no male friends. He's a player. <laughs> you don't say it. But they cut a covenant. Now, you know, I, I love teaching on covenant. We don't have time for that today. Verse 3, Jonathan and David made a covenant. Okay, they already had love. Why did they make a covenant? Because one of the things that happens is a covenant brings security. It brings security. And so, yeah, it's cool to have people that you enjoy time with. But that is, it, it's different when there is a covenant relationship. That says we've come to a place where we recognize you've got a certain kind of heart. We have the same kind of value system. And yeah, like you take me and Z, we don't necessarily enjoy the same things. I think she likes to shop. I don't like shopping. We do both like jewelry. But other than that, we just don't have a whole bunch of interests that are common, but we share common values. And so there came a point in our interaction and talking and laughing and fussing that we said, this thing is going to be ride or die. And that covenant there brings security so that somebody close to me dies, I don't have to wonder whether she's going to be there. And when somebody close to her dies, she doesn't have to wonder, am I going to be there? If something happens... And I have to not go to uh, IP and L. If something happens to Zenobia on April 21st, and she said, I need you, there's a million preachers. I'm, I'm talking about friendship now. I'm talking about covenant now. See, there's a sense of security there. David and Jonathan said, look, we already know that I, th this thing could go any kind of way. I'm the prince, but you're the one that's anointed to be king. I don't know how this is going to go, but so that we can provide security, you need to ask God, God, help me find somebody that has a heart for you, that has a heart for me, so that we can make a decision. Hey, when we get old, Darlene, I know you got me. When I get old, she even know, Arlene know I got her, because there's a certain covenant that we share, no matter what it means. You need that. Got to get beyond the games of I don't like you if you don't do what I want you to do. You want to see a pitiful marriage? You want to see a pitiful one? Let it be such that they can't, no sense of security. Hiding. Oh, Lord. So he first made a covenant, didn't he? I know that clock didn't say 27 seconds. Oh, 
I'm going to have to owe $100 because I got cloaked, number two, cloaked. Write the word cloaked, C-L-O-A-K-E-D. It means, watch this, somebody that sows into your future. He cloaked him. Watch this in 1 Samuel 18, 4. This is a real friend. Jonathan, David comes up. What job did, Don, Jonathan, did David have? David was a what? Shepherd. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Y'all thought it was a trick question. <laughs> no. Remember, he was walking through sheep stuff. So he goes to the palace. He don't have palace clothes. You know his daddy ain't bought him no decent clothes. He wouldn't even call him to the potential of being anointed for king. So when he gets there, what does a real friend do? A real friend, Jonathan, took off his robe and covered him. He said, you need, first of all, I know who you are, but you need to look like you belong here. So I can get, I got other clothes. Here, you take this. Let me cover you. See, when you see these people come out in these dresses, and she's, she's a size 18, and the dress she got on is a 12, she ain't got any friends. <laughs> she ain't got... Y'all know girl ain't got no friends? A real friend was, ah, uh uh-uh, no, where you going? No, baby, you can't go nowhere in that. The Holy Ghost can't get in between you and that polyester. No, no, no. My birthday, they're not trying to have church with me. He cloaked him. He said, I don't want you to feel, this is what real friendship does. He says, I don't want you to feel cold from fear like you don't belong. I don't want you to be in an environment where you don't feel like you're good enough. So I'll take what I have and I'll cover you so that, David, you can stand here and feel just like everybody else. A real friend is not intimidated with what God is doing in your life, but they'll cover you. Oh, y'all don't feel it. Okay. Come on, we got to hurry. Watch this. Give me 1 Samuel 19. Hurry, hurry, hurry. So the first thing we see in this real friendship, this covenant, is that they make a covenant to provide security. Second thing is he cloaked him. Jonathan cloaked him. He sowed into his future and, and, and declared and stood in agreement with his destiny. Third thing I want you to make note is he communicated. He spoke up for him. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, start reading right quick. And Saul <clears throat> spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, yep. that they should kill David. Hmm. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. That's right. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. He said, I know that's my daddy, but I want you to know my dad trying to kill you. That's covenant. And can I say this? Some of y'all won't have that kind of covenant with the folk in your family. Because everything that's skin to you ain't kin to you. Okay? Don't be mad at them. They're sweet people. But they may not have the kind of heart. Now, you still be committed. You still be family. But don't mess up and start sharing stuff with somebody that's company like their covenant. I can open my accounts to some people. What would I say? Some. I ain't near about opening everything. To everybody? No. Everybody that I enjoy? Oh, <laughs> dog, no. I'd be bouncing checks everywhere if I did that. First Samuel, he told, he told David, he said, my dad trying to kill you. And, and he goes on and says, I tell you what, verse 2, John's delighted. He told him about it. He said, take heed. Be careful. Verse 3, he said, I'm going to go out and stand beside my dad tomorrow, and I'll commune with him. And whatever I see, I'll tell you. Verse 4, Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul, his father. If you won't speak up. See, oh, can we talk for a second? You remember when Jesus said, who do, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some said this, some said the other. Peter said, I know who you are. The biggest issue was, how come it was only Peter? What happened to the rest of them? You're not a real friend. If somebody's talking, somebody come up and say, I don't like, I'm just on you today, Tracy, up here. I don't like Lady Tracy. See how she does it? Watch this. And they can say that around me? It ain't that they ain't a friend. I ain't a friend. See, anytime I find out when people say, well, I just say a lot of people share stuff with me, and, you know, I just, a lot of people, they just don't like, you know, so and so. all them folk feel comfortable talking to you. I can't trust you either. 
Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. Real relationship has you speaking up for somebody. It has you communicating. Real friendship was, ah, wait, hold on before you say that. I'm going to need you to know that's my buddy, so I need to know whether I need to go and get my Vaseline now. If y'all don't know what that means, I'm not telling you. You understand? But it says, see, real friendship, real covenant says, I got your back. And it, look, I will have your back, and I will say, I will be on your side until the very end. And if I find out you're wrong, now I'm going to get you. But all right now, you're not going to talk about them. There's no way that happened. You turn around. What do you do? Y'all not here. No, I'm talking about real relationship. He spoke up for him. Look at verse 7. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all the things because it was determined that Saul was going to try to kill him. And so in verse 7, Jonathan called David, spoke up to him, said, hey, I talked to my dad. Everything's good now. And so David, and, he brought, and watch this, and Jonathan brought David to Saul. You, you, you're not a friend if you're not trying to get them where they need to go. Oh, y'all, y'all done got sleepy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shake yourself or something. You need somebody that's trying to push you. Yeah. Let me give you this last thing. Real friendship we see in Jonathan because he covered David. He was a shelter for him. He was a what? Shelter. If you look at 1 Samuel 20, there's so many verses, 1 through 4. Just read the whole chapter. But in 1 through 4, you know, here Saul's at it again. He's still trying to kill him. David says in verse 1, what have I done? Why are your dad trying to kill me? Verse 2, John, in, John, in chapter 20, verse 2, Jonathan said, I ain't going to let that happen. Dad will tell me whatever. David said in verse 3, Doc, you don't know. Your daddy knows how much you care about me. He, David said, it ain't looking good for me. And verse 4, Jonathan said unto him, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it for you. See, Jonathan let him know when danger was near. Jonathan was honest with him. Listen, a real friend will be honest. Say, I can tell you're slipping. A real friend will vouch for you in front of other people. A real, y'all still here? Y'all done gone on. A real friend, a covenant friend. And man, you and I need to look at Jonathan and see what we're supposed to be doing. And so instead of looking to see whether anybody's doing it for you, who do you provide security to? Who feels comfortable facing difficult seasons because of you? Who have you cloaked, sewn into their future? See how it switched? As long as I was talking about you need somebody, y'all were hollering with me. Now I said, who are you providing it for? All y'all look like somebody gave you some kind of stun gas. <laughs> who have you spoken up for? Who means so much to you that you will stop somebody mid-sentence and say, uh-uh-uh-uh, before you put your foot on them, you better hold your knee in the air because you wouldn't want, you don't want me. Moving on. Who have you covered? Who are you a shelter for? And I give you this. If you look at Jonathan, you see what Jesus did. Jesus did every one of them things. He cut covenant for us so that you and I don't have to be afraid every other day we're going to hell. If we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, we got a covenant with God. Look what he did. He cloaked us. He took off. He made himself to be sin, who knew no sin. And then what did he do? He put his righteousness on us. We didn't belong in the king's palace. But he cut, come on, y'all, he covered us. And he spoke up for us. And he's still speaking up for us. The Bible said that he ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. He's still speaking up for you. When you say you're going to do something, you don't do it. And the devil says, see, don't bless them ever again. They're lying. Jesus speaks up. Ah, 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 ah. Don't, don't pay no attention to him. That's one of the ones I plucked out the fire. Put their charge on my account. Oh, my God. And how many know he's a shelter for you? The Bible says, you know, a friend ought to love at all times. And the Bible says in Proverbs 18:24. It talks about if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly. So in other words, you need to be to the person God shows you what you want someone to be to you. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. At the end of the day, if you don't have what we've talked about, 
You can believe God for it, but you are not on your own because there is a friend. You do have a friend. No, I say you do have a friend. His name is Jesus. 